<clears throat> so we are uh, done with chapter four. Moving on to chapter five. So God one has three topics. It's limits, derivatives, and integrals. Um, so this is, uh, well, <clears throat> probably the most interesting one. Um, also the hardest one. Um, this section is actually pretty hard, but it gets better, I promise. <clears throat> and I'm gonna spend a while on it anyway. So the question, what we're trying to do here is um, measure areas. So what is area? <clears throat> that's the question, that's the question I wanna answer. So area, well, you know what area is. The amount of space something a shape takes up. Um, you know, for example, that, well, you know that if this is one and this is one, then the area is the base times the height, which in this case would be eight squares. So when I say the area is eight, eight squares, I mean that this rectangle takes as much room, exactly as much room as eight little squares. Um, so even without saying what the area is, you know what the area of a rectangle is very clearly because the base times the height gives you a number of squares that fit in there. And if you get fractions, well, the number of fractions of squares, um, you you know the area. Uh, of a triangle, which essentially comes from the area of a rectangle, like you you hopefully you remember this. You you figure out the area of a rectangle by cutting it into pieces until it turns into a rectangle. Uh, any shape that you can split into into triangles. So basically any, anything with straight sides, um, you understand the area pretty well. The problem is, um, what about, um, uh, what about shapes with uh, curved sides? So you know the area of a circle. You know a circle of radius r has area by r squared, but why is that? It's I don't know if you ever if you ever been told why this is true. Um, so. The question is, how can I compute the area of a potato? I guess I could always paint it and then count how much paint I used, but Maybe the potato has the size of a galaxy, in which case I don't have enough paint. So, 
So that's a problem we're trying to solve. Does anyone have any idea or any questions? That's what I'm trying to do. You should have to already know. That's a great idea. But the question is, how do we use the shapes? Because the potato doesn't split into triangles. We show as many as we can in there. That's a good idea. Um, that's, that's a great idea. So there's many triangles. So when you try to draw the shape, well, it's not gonna look the same, is it? Um, instead of trying to do this area, try to do your best to split it into triangles. And it's not gonna work. So then you have, So then the area I'm looking at is um, the area of the triangles. And then there's something left over, which has a nasty shape. And I can't really compute. Um, so if I go, so the, the most reasonable thing to do with a thing that you can't compute at all is, uh, ignore it. You can't compute it. So F it. Um, so what you know is that the area is going to be bigger than the area of the triangles. Um, so. If I figure out the area of the triangles, like here, it looks like there's maybe like 11 squares in there. Um, I know that the area of the potato is at least 11. Uh, it would be nice to know, it would be nice to know what the area, um, what, this gives us a lower bound for the area. It would be nice to have an upper bound to do this. Um, I, I can, I can just, instead of putting triangles in the potato, I can put the potato inside of some triangles. To get an upper bound. Put potato inside triangles instead. Because even if I don't understand area that well, I know that if the shape is containing another, then the bigger one has a bigger area. So then the area I'm looking for it's gonna be smaller than the area of the triangles. So I can't compute the area, but I can tell you maybe it's between 11 and 13 squares. Um, and for all practical purposes, approximating is as good as computing a lot of the time. <clears throat> So, um,
if I um, put triangles inside of my shape, I get a lower tone for the area. And if I put my shape inside some triangles, I get an upper bound. Um, how do I make uh, the bounds more accurate? So more accurate would be make them closer to each other. If I know it's between 11 and 13, maybe better bound would be is between 12.5 and 12.6. Um, well, um, the answer is to use more triangles. This is on her right now. So the more triangles you use, uh, the more accurate you are. On the other hand, um, if the shape is actually it doesn't have straight sides, you're never gonna get uh, you're ne you're never gonna get exactly that shape with just triangles. Um, so there's a quantity, and you can find a lot of quantities that get close to it, and you're never uh, going to get exactly that quantity. That reminds me of a limit. So, so that's the idea. Um, now, now I'm going to try to put it into practice and compute an area. Uh, see if we can get anything meaningful. So, um, this is the area we're gonna to try to find. So we have the axis here. It's 10. So this is a parabola. This is our favorite parabola. Um, this is x equals one. And I'm trying to find this area, the area under the parabola. So, um, so here's an estimate, which is better than no estimate. Um, it's inside the square. Um, of radius of side, um, of side one. Right, all of the all of the sides here are one, and this is inside this bigger square. So, um, 
So the area is between zero and one. And maybe that's good enough, though it looks like it's, I mean, I could even say it's inside of the triangle. I know it's less than one half. Um, so let's, um, let's try to do better than just, um, Let's try to get a lower estimate at least. Um, so, <clears throat> so what I'm supposed to do is fill this with shapes as much as I can. Now I could set, I could. So this is. I could start drawing triangles sort of randomly. I could go, I could go like this, I guess. Um, but I don't want to, because that's going to be super hard to compute. Why, when, why not just uh, use the easiest shapes I can think of? Um, I could use, so the easiest shape to compute the area of, I guess is a square, um, but squares, I mean, rectangles are just as easy, so I'm going to use rectangles. So, um, and also putting a rectangle here like this uh, would be terrible. It would just, again, make things just harder to compute. I wouldn't know what the, what the base and the height is. So let's just, let's not do that. Let's, let's do vertical rectangles. Uh, so, how can I make my life as easy as possible? Um, I could split it into, split the, the, the base of the shape into equal sides and then fill in the tallest rectangle I can, I can make with that base. So that gives me, well, this rectangle has no height. And then there's three rectangles in there. So, So I could start, I mean, like I said, I can, I can start putting rectangles um, in any, any way I want, but that would just, there's no reason to make my life hard. Uh, there's just no reason. So, um, so let's try to compute the low area. So the area, is gonna be bigger than the sum of areas of the blue rectangles. Hopefully I can find these areas. I think that I think they'll be able to. So um well I need to find I need to find the, the bases and the heights. So I made them all equal. So All the they all all the bases measure one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. These lengths are all one fourth. Um. And what about the heights? What about the heights? So what's the, so these are the corners where it's touching. What are, um, what are the heights there?
Déjà, on doit avoir un. If you're saying that one is double the next, uh, the, or the previous one, that's not true because, well, the first one is zero. The second one is not zero. Yes. Um, so this is, that would be the case if this was an exponential function, but it's not an exponential function. It's the parabola y plus x squared. And this is the point x equals 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 So if you take the point 0 0.5 here and the graph of y plus x squared, which is the same that I have down there, what is the height of this point? Zero point twenty five. So I'm assuming you got zero point twenty five by squaring zero point five. All right, two of you got it. So probably, it's probably right if two two people arrive at the same answer. Yeah. So if you um, if if x y is on the graph, which it is, um, which these points are on the graph. If you have a point on the graph of a function, then the y coordinate is the function applied to the x coordinate. So in this case, the heights, uh, well, they are 0 squared, 0.25 squared, 0.5 squared, 0.75 squared. So um, that's all I need to compute. I mean, I have the heights, I have the bases. I can find the areas of the rectangles. So this is 1 fourth squared, 1 half squared, 3 fourths squared. So. I'm just going to need to redo this again. So I have those three. Uh, rectangles um, and the area of the rectangles is going to be one fourth times the height of zero for the first one. Uh, and not it's not even a rectangle. One fourth times uh, one fourth squared. One fourth times one half squared, one fourth times three fourths squared. And now this is the kind of thing you put into a calculator. Um, and it will tell you. Uh, 
um, 0 0.21875 exactly. <clears throat> So I guess I know I now I now know that the area uh, under the parabola is um, is at least point one eight seven five, which is better than what I knew before, which is better than zero. And I guess I know it's bigger than one half. Um, so I think I know that it's bigger than one fourth. So this is, I mean, this is okay. I guess it's not the best estimate. Um, I should get a better estimate by doing more rectangles. Of course, this is not the kind of thing. Well, I. We're going to learn way, way better ways to do this. But even if I was computing areas of rectangles, I wouldn't be writing it by hand. I would be, uh, I would make a computer do it. Um, because if I'm going to repeat something a thousand times, the thing is a computer could split it into a thousand rectangles. And it would be, you know, once I, once the shape under the parabola, once it looks like this, the stuff that I'm not actually measuring, the stuff between the rectangles and the parabola uh, becomes pretty small. You can see there, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not quite zero, but it's gonna get a lot better. But also, who wants to do this? Um, another thing I could do if I was living in the 17th century and didn't have a computer, or if I wanted to understand this better, is try to write down a formula. So, um, to improve my estimate, I should, um, I should use, um, more rectangles. Um, so what I would like to do, since I'm a mathematician after all, is can I find the, the total area of n rectangles? So can I just write down a formula? that will give me the answer that without drawing a thousand rectangles, I will just plug n into 1000 into the formula and I will get the answer. That would be great. And that's what I'm going to do. And it's, um, well, it's tricky. Um, you have to, you have to picture n rectangles in your head and you have to think of what their bases and heights are gonna be. And then you're gonna have to add the areas of n many things. Um, this is what makes this topic complicated, but we're going to do it because we're, because we're great. <clears throat> There's nothing can stop us. So, um, so let's, let's go back to the parabola. So now, what I'm trying to do is imagine that the base is split into n equal pieces. So we can fit n rectangles. under the parabola 
let's compute the total area of this n rectangle rectangles. So um so like before I need to find the base and the heights of them and then sum them all. So um if I take if I go from zero to one and I split it into into n equal pieces, um How long how long is each of the pieces? If I split it into four is one fourth. Sam says one over n. It is one over n. So each of them is one over n units long. Um, I know it's one over n because when I do one over n n times, I get one, which is the total length. So um, the base, the easy part, the base of the rectangles is one over n. So now what about the height? So for the height, I need to, what I need to do is say, there's these points on the x axis and these are gonna be the function applied to them. The, the heights of the corresponding points on the graph. So um, on the x-axis, I have, well, my first point is zero. My last point is one. And then the next point is one over, one over n meters after it. So this is the point one over n. Then I go one over n more. So this is, Two over n. Uh, this is three over n. Uh, here, well, if I keep going, the thing is, I don't know. N is supposed to be whatever it is, so I don't know what what's in here. So this is i over n for some for some other number i. Uh, and the last one, so. One is n divided by n. The last one is n minus one divided by n. And then we have n minus two divided by n. So uh, these are the, the points on the x-axis. So um, now we need to find the height. Um, so um, well, the point above zero has is, is zero zero. Then I have one over n. So here's the parabola. I said, so what is the height of the point above one over n? What is the y coordinate of this point? One over n squared. Thank you, Cindy. One over n squared. So since uh, the parabola is the graph of 
y equals x squared. Um, these are the squares of the points on the x-axis. Um, okay, so I'm out of space, but that's what I gotta do. I gotta square, I have zero, one over n, two over n, three over n, i over n, something, n minus two over n, n minus one over n, uh, n over n, which is one. So, um, the points, the corresponding points uh, up here are the squares. Um, this is I, this is going to be I squared over N squared. This is, so they're all whatever is in the x-axis squared. And the last one is one squared. So I guess my picture is not to scale. Um, so um, the height of the first rectangle is zero over n squared, which is zero. The second is one squared over n squared. The third is two squared over n squared. The fourth is three squared over n squared. The ith well, according to this formula, it's the previous number squared divided by n squared. So, um, the total area is the sum of base times height. So the base, um, this is this is always one over n. We already decided that. And this is well um this this changes for each rectangle. So the total area is gonna be one over n times zero plus one over n times one squared divided by n squared plus one over n times two squared divided by n squared plus, and then you keep going until you reach n squared divided by n squared. And well, this is a formula. Um, it's kind of an essay formula because I'm summing a lot of things, um, but it's a formula nonetheless. If a calculator is fancy enough, I can I can put that formula in there. So you should ask, ask questions because this is probably the hardest class in the in the whole course so far. So far. Why did you use i? Like instead of just saying like four squared over n squared, why did you use i? What is what does that mean? It just means that I don't want to commit to saying it's four. Uh, I at some point. I want to talk about some unknown rectangle in the middle. And the best way to do that is to give it a letter. Like when you want to talk, if you want to talk about the double of a number that I, you don't want to, you don't want to commit to which number it is, you would say something like two X, right? So you, you choose a random letter uh, and you just say that that letter represents a number. And I is a uh, letter that is usually used for counting, but I could use, I could call it A, you know. The choice of letter doesn't matter. 
that I just want to be able to express what happens, what the, the sentence. So what I'm trying to say in words is um, to find the height of a rectangle. Um, I look at its place in the sequence. So it's, if it's the fourth one, I take four, subtract one square and divide by n squared. So I could say this, but I mean, instead of writing a sentence, what I could say is um, call the place in the sequence, call it i, and then subtract one means take n minus one squared and divide by n squared. So at the end of the day, writing sentences it takes it's just harder to understand than using letters in algebra. Uh, Why are you subtracting one? Because um, because it's just how things work out. If you think if I'm calling this the first rectangle, the first one doesn't have has height zero, and the second one. So this is the first. This is the second. The second one has height one over n squared. The third one has height two squared divided by n squared. Um, so what I did before with four rectangles, I have one, two, three, four. So the the first had height zero. The second has height one squared divided by uh, four. Uh, no, four squared. The third has. So this is the the second, and the height I can find I can find it here. This is one fourth squared. Here I have. 2 fourths squared, here I have 3 fourths squared. The third has height 2 squared over 4 squared. The fourth has height 3 squared over 4 squared. So you can see that I take the order and I, I always, the height works out to 1 less squared divided by 4 squared. So it's just the way things work out. because I, I want to count the, the rectangle at the beginning, basically. This area is just an underestimate, yes. Did I answer your question, Sydney? Yes, I got it. All right. Yeah, so um, I have a formula, so I have to write it down again. Um, and it's it's just an underestimate, and I would have to do a similar thing to get an overestimate. But the thing is, I'm still hoping if I make n very, very large, I'm still gonna get um, I'm still gonna get a good approximation, even though I don't get exactly the area. So <clears throat> what I got was that the area is um, uh, 1 over n times 0 plus 1 over n times 1 squared over n squared. At some point here, I have 1 over n times pi minus 1 squared divided by n squared. Oh, this is not cool. So the last triangle. The last rectangle doesn't have height n squared because the last rectangle, I'm, I'm using the penultimate point for it. So, okay. So this is the area that I have. And uh, 
this so doing areas involves taking a lot of sums and at some point you just get tired of writing dot 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 so what you do is you use um a thing called sigma notation which is just i'm going to tell you what the recipe for the sum is i'm not i'm not writing the sum so sigma this is the letter sigma capital sigma um what it amounts to is um instead of writing the sum I give you a formula for uh, each summon, and I tell you to sum it. So the way sigma notation works is that I write a formula, like for example, I squared. And there's some there's some lettering there, and I tell you so, and I write something like this. Say one. Um, let's say five. So what this means? So this means that you take a sum going from i. So the thing in the bottom is the the beginning. And the thing in the top is the end. So you're supposed. So if you read, if you see this symbol, um, the way to read it is the sum from i equals one to five of i squared, and that means that you make i equals one, then you make i equals two, then you make i equals three until you get to five. So those two things just mean exactly the same thing, but um, the left hand is just shorter. So if you ask me, so do you want to know how much the numbers from one to a hundred sum? Uh, I can tell you very, very fast because if I just write sum in here, it understands what I'm trying to do. And so what, are the, what is the sum of the numbers from zero to a hundred? It's half a million and 500. Uh, so, for example, this allows me to plug it into a calculator uh, without starting to go like this, uh, which would take a while. So, um, this takes a while. This notation takes a while getting used to, but alas. Um, so, for example, so you can do this for well, anything. Um, in this case, I have 1 over n times 0. The thing is, I, I bothered to write a formula for the triangle, so for the rectangle in position i. Um, it's the one I got there. It's 1 over n times i minus 1 squared divided by n squared. Um, so if I start giving values to i and make i equals one, two, three, four, five, I get um, I get everything in this sum. So what I'm trying to say here is that this is the sum from i equals zero. Uh, so no, the first the first number I plug in is i equals one. The last number is i equals n. And in there, I take i minus 1 squared divided by n cubed, basically. So this is the area under the the, the estimate for the area under the, under the parabola when I, when, when I use n many rectangles. And let me just finish by... Um, Finish by putting into the calculator uh, the formula I just wrote. The sum from i to from i equals one to n 
of one over n times i minus one squared divided by n squared. So we did, before we did n equals four, and this is the number we got. But now that I have a formula, I can just go like this, make n as big as I want before the computer crashes. Um, and one thing you can see is that if I make n bigger and bigger, somebody's just gonna get pissed, I mean, I'm making it do literally 100 million sums now. Um, I make n bigger and bigger, this is approaching something. So the area, I can say that the area is the limit of this as n goes to infinity. As we make the triangle smaller and smaller, the area of the triangles should be approaching the actual area of the parabola. All right, that's it. Um, I will stop recording.